Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayalway and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today we have another shop review video going over five different Redbubble shops that have a lot of mistakes. And um, I think that uh, I had someone ask me, how do I choose the Redbubble shops to review? Because we have this Google form in the link down below in the description where you can go in and anonymously submit your shops, Redbubble, Society6, Etsy, whatever. And there are so many shops submitted. I was asked, how do I choose which shops to review in a video? So to be completely honest with you guys, the way that I'm searching and choosing the shops to be presented on these reviews is by finding flaws. That's like the first thing that I'm looking for because you know, what would a shop review video look like without any critique? Okay, so this shop is perfect, this shop is perfect, everything is perfect, go away, two minute video, bye bye. But shops that have flaws there is a lot to say about them and that is i think why you're also i don't know submitting your shops for reviews to get tips and ideas on how to improve so i'm always looking for shops that have flaws that i can talk about but then i'm trying to sort of find out shops that have similar flaws so that we will have this like concept idea and today I think that the majority of the shops that I was reviewing today had a very similar flaw, and that was with the product selection. Whenever you're uploading a new design onto Redbubble and you're activating it on so many products, you have the chance to choose the product that will be featured for this design or to have Redbubble choose for you. And they do write this like it's recommended, it's optimized, but the fact is that it's often optimized to what Redbubble wants to sell. And in that case, in the past few weeks, it's been optimized to hats, desk mats, and mouse pads. And with a lot of these shops, the desk mats and the mouse pads and the hats just don't look good. Or at least they're not the best foot forward to present for that specific design. I'm also looking for shops that are versatile within all of these flaws together so the video will not be boring as well as with shops that have social links that have their own website to go in and see what other people are doing and i hope that you do like the five shops that i chose for today's redbubble shop review video to the ones of you who i have chose for this shop review video i hope that you see my critique <laughs> as something to build you up and not something to put you down i'm only saying the things that i'm saying to get you to understand what you need to change or maybe understand why your Redbubble products are not selling. And to those of you who have not been selected, I think that there is a lot to learn from watching other people's mistakes and I hope that you'll enjoy this video. And I'm gonna stop talking now. Let's go to my computer and have fun reviewing five different Redbubble shops. So the first store we're gonna start with is Peter Stowicki Stool. And I'm gonna start with a cover. Okay, so these are the designs that I'm expecting to see. We have t-shirts here, but then we have a kiss. Not That's the only thing not on a mock-up. And it also feels like these should have been lower. Like these should have arrived up until here instead of being so small. And this should have been smaller or this should not have existed at all. I'm not sure why these like windows effects is here. There is also an email address here that says, we do custom designs. Who's we? I mean, Peter Stowicki is a person, or in that case, a corgi, but uh, I don't understand who's the we. And I would also recommend putting a photo of you here, even though it's adorable. But if I go down, this is interesting. So all the cover just showed t-shirt designs. And here we have one, two, three, four. We only have four t-shirts in the entire thing. Your cover photo does not represent your shop. In here we have some Halloween stickers. I'm not sure why you have a black background to some of these. Uh, I think the stickers would look a lot better without those. Also here, spooktacular. That's awesome. But the spooktacular should be written in a different color, not in white, at least for the sticker. Scrolling down, I have a collection here that I want to look into, which is Corgi Tees. And as I go into Corgi Tees, again, the majority of the designs are chosen to present as stickers. If these are Corgi Tees, all of these items should feature t-shirts. You can have just Corgi designs and then it's fine. But if the category name is Corgi Tees, it should feature t-shirts with Corgis on them. By the way, I'd rather be home with my dog is awesome. It has nothing to do with the Corgi though. 
I split, therefore I am. The loved one is kind of cool. I can't I have plans with my dog, with my pug. Why plans with my pug is under Corgi t-shirts. Why is a sticker about a pug under Corgi t-shirts as well as Proud Texan, as well as a Free Australia sticker, which by the way, again, when you're designing stickers, why the background? I mean, this sticker could look so much better if it just said Free Australia in blue or in red. And then the entire background would be just transparent. It will look a lot better. Also, this design that has nothing to do with Corgi is another pug here. So I think that you should really try and, you know, get settled in terms of your categories and your collections. Going back to your store, this looks like a mess. This is like a huge white sticker. Because of all the dots, it just created this weird thing. So for the stickers, because I do believe that this will be a cool concept on other items, but for the stickers, you need to delete this. It just needs to be the bottle and then hydrate or dihydrate. By the way, hydrate or dihydrate is cool, but that kind of doesn't look like a water bottle. It more looks like a medicine bottle. Maybe it's the uh, dimensions of it. In something like the iPhone, maybe you should consider having the bottle and then under it, the hydrate or dihydrate, and I do see that you have this file without all the stuff around it because you have that on the hat. And if I'm going to the poster for a second, it's just weird. Why isn't it cut? Because you have all these dots here and then they stop. I don't know if you guys can see this, but these dots just stop. And they stop because this was the design and you somehow put it in something larger. This design should have been cropped this way. The hand is not even in here. It just came out wrong. You have to choose which files to upload to each and every one of your designs, even here. Makes no sense. There's a difference between good graphic design and good product design, and I think that's the problem here. Also, if I'm looking at Island Life, why is this all the way up top? Why is it cropped up top? Why is it so all the way there? This circle should have been way lower, and the Island Life... I would recommend to write in lighter orange color than this one. I think that you have a lot of cool ideas, but they just don't look good. I mean, even here. Why is this like this? Why isn't it lot lower? This actually, as a sticker, just the circle, could have been a lot nicer than this one. As well as this one, which is cropped at the top. It's just like something is missing. The main thing that you should do in order to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward in terms of your designs for Redbubble is to ask yourself, would you buy this? Would you buy an artboard print that has this huge black nothing at the bottom and is not aligned here? This is too far close to the edges. It's not a design for an artboard print and you don't have to activate everything on all the products if they don't look good on them. Um, this design should be raised above. This was one of the biggest comments in terms of my art and my designs. You should raise this above in the t-shirts. And at least it has a transparent background. And that's the one good thing about this design on top of t-shirts. You have so much potential. Again, I'd rather be fishing. This looks cool. This looks adorable. And you can see that it's raised a bit upper than the rest. But I'm pretty sure that if I look at other designs like this, which makes no sense. I mean, you can't even, it doesn't make sense as a legging. This one is too high. This one is too high. I think that you're just not aligning it and not doing anything. You're just taking up a design and uploading it, whatever. And I think that you should either make the choice to just feature these designs on t-shirts or to take the time and adjust them for other products. I think that pretty much every single tutorial that we had on this channel with Redbubble shows how to make one design into a bunch of them. And another problem I see here, because of your bad dimensions, if you'd say I'd rather be fishing, and instead of these dimensions, you'd put it on a 5,000 by 3,500 pixel a horizontal design, the entire postcard would be horizontal and would be filled instead of being vertically aligned and having this black box in the middle that makes no sense. Again, too high on the design, too high on the design, looks weird, too high on the design, no one can read it. Why is there a background here?
just write, I'd rather be fishing in black and add it on the tote bag. In the mug, your consistent mistake with all of your designs is the fact that with the mug, you should have had one design on this side and one design on the other and not one design in the middle. And even here, I'd rather be fishing. Don't repeat this pattern. It doesn't look good. This should be lower so people can actually read this. Lower and smaller makes no sense on the socks. The socks would just make a pattern of the fish. And you have a lot of potential here, but you're not optimizing for products and you're not putting your best foot forward because you are showcasing products that don't look good. For example, this that mostly no one can read. Like this that has a sticker with white text like this that just has a full black area around it that makes no sense. And these stickers could be so much better without this background. They could just be nice. All the cool kids are reading. Shorten the, the length, the gap between the text and make it black, the text itself, for the sticker. And it would look good. And you can see here, all these stickers are gonna come off connected. And the four stars of the American flag are gonna come as one sticker. Because you literally put a white background to them. Instead of having four of these that are separated enough on a PNG transparent background design that will come off as four stickers and not just one. I don't think the choice of a desk mat here was wise. They're, it's kind of boring, it's just mostly white. And I think that you have a lot of potential, but you're not putting your best foot forwards in terms of the designs and you're not optimizing for different products. Moving on to Anna Lee and Kay LLC, creating funny designs for the young and happy Latina woman. By the way, creating funny designs for young and happy Latina women or for the young and happy Latina woman, not both. Your cover photo is a bit lacking. I mean, I like that you have all of these, but you could have stretched this all the way down and all the way up instead of it looking this way and maybe added a bit more factors in it because it kind of looks boring. Also, the t-shirt on a hanger, nice. Maybe different designs for this and maybe a different background if you want to use this hanger because I can barely see it. Scrolling down, I'm 99% I'm sure of what I'm about to say. You had your products set that the featured product would be Redbubble's choice, right? Because Redbubble is now choosing to show everything on hats, on desk mats and mouse pads because they're trying to push it forward. And I don't think that when you wrote down that these are designs for a young Latina woman that you meant to have so many desk mats and mouse pads. You should manually choose the designs you want to be featuring on each product. You should manually choose the products that are being featured on the main page because you will be missing out on stuff. This could have been an awesome sticker to show for, sticker or t-shirt. Even a poster would look nice with this. T-shirt, I'm guessing t-shirt for this. And let's just go into one of these ones. We have Proud Dominicana, which again, no one can see the design because it's on a desk mat and most of it will be covered. But Let's go into one of the t-shirts, and the t-shirts look good. Surprise, surprise. You made an awesome t-shirt. Go back into this design and make sure that for the long t-shirts and all of those, you choose a black featured photo for these designs because on a black, it looks really good because it has white components, but on the white, it just looks like it's missing. I really like the roses here. And you call it a pattern. Oh, okay. I did not expect this. I did not expect this. I'm not, I don't know if I like it or hate it. It's, it's very out there. Um, the design itself is good. I mean, the color palette is insane and I like the versatility. The thing is, I think it was too versatile again on the white t-shirt. This doesn't look good. Maybe you should have tried to make a pattern from this and these flowers without the backgrounds behind them. Although it does look kind of sweet on sleeveless top, but if I'm looking at this design, we have this like an amazing like green and white design. And then you have here, you have this like black and red design. And then you have like this mess 
these should have been three different designs, all of them with their own specific merch, because all three of them can kind of look appealing. And the leggings, I would shrink this down a lot so that it will look a lot smaller, thus more compelling and less, because it's kind of weird when it's so big. But on stickers, it's it's really bad. This is really bad. This is one square sticker. You should have placed it on a transparent background and this would have come off as four different stickers, which would have made it so much better. And yes, people can cut their own stickers, but guess what? They can't cut their own magnets. It just won't look good. On photographic prints and metal prints, you should choose either a transparent background if you're going with a square shape image or choose a vertically or horizontally aligned image to be featured. And that will cancel off this square you have in the middle of a postcard. It also looks kind of weird as a, as a print because it kind of touches the edges and it's not, I wouldn't like it as a print. I do like it as an all over tote bag, but again, I would have also liked seeing the tote bag with that design. The mask is the one brilliant product here. Why not make it on that one as well? I, I thought it was a nice idea. It was a really nice concept. And I do see that you do have a lot, a lot, a lot of potential. I also remember from checking out your store that there was something wrong with your Instagram. So go ahead and check out why this problem occur. But I also remembered you had a website. And how may we serve you today? By the looks of it, I would reckon this would be a co-working space or a cafe or a shared office space of some sort. It's time to move and enjoy life. I'm not sure what this is about, but it doesn't look really relating to your Redbubble store. I'm not sure why this is your website. I mean, it has very little to do with what you're doing and it just takes people off the fact that you actually have a Redbubble store. I mean, it has nothing to do with your Redbubble store and your Redbubble designs, which by the way, again, should not be placed on so many of these items. Go in directly to each and every one of your 126 designs and change the featured product to be the product that looks best for each and every one of these designs. Moving on to I Migrate 32. I think that you try to do like a logo here, although I can't really see it, and I don't get the cover photo at all. I don't. I do think that you had some nice designs here, although I'm not sure where your product selection came from, and I do have a lot of, a lot of things to say. Number one, let's go to patterns. And um, I think this is from one of my tutorials, although I'm not sure. Um, it is kind of cute, I kind of like it. The funny thing here is that I remember from the main page that there was this amazing pattern, and it's not on the patterns category, and it was this one. And just because I, I just looked at this and this was a different product and I came back to this now and it was a hat. Your designs, a lot of them are designed so that Redbubble would choose the featured product for you, which is bad because I remember this awesome thing being on a desk mat and now every day is magnificent, is awesome and no one can read it. The baseball cap that you, that you choose here should be black as the featured one because it just looks better. And this should be the first color from the hats, but the hat shouldn't necessarily be your featured image because the stickers are amazing and all of your patterns are adorable. I mean, this is adorable. Okay, this is not because, you know, the design doesn't really fit a circle. I would maybe make them magnificent also in uh, a curved text for some of the products, but make it with a black background. But look at your throw blankets. So many of your products that include pattern are so much better than what you're putting yourself forward with. And I want to go also to another blanket. I want you to bring me my cat. Not sure what you wanted to say here. Not sure why it's a pattern on a blanket. It doesn't look good. You don't have to activate all the products. If something doesn't look on us good on a certain product, don't activate it on it. I mean, would you pay $55 for a 60 by 50 inch, it's not even a big one, like a normal size blanket, $73 for a white 
blanket that in the middle says, you are my spring. Why? Don't activate stuff that don't look good. Just don't. They're just taking up space in your shop. If people are really into blankets, going into your shop, this is what they'll see. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't want to pay so much money on a white blanket. You have really nice designs, but again, it blips out. Pinky sunset dramatic view shouldn't even be on a t-shirt. I reckon this would be a really nice wall poster, wall art on, of any kind. Ask my brother, he eats everything. While having a fitness silhouette and muscles here. Which, by the way, someone who's so much into fitness and muscles and weightlifting doesn't eat everything. And I just don't see the logic. Also, he knows everything with the same design. It just doesn't really make sense. I want you to bring me a turtle. Um, okay. Even though you, you do see that you repeat this pattern for some reason, because I can see the top of the turtle here in the bottom and the bottom of the text here at the top. Why are you repeating this design? Why not just have it with a transparent background and then color it in black? And um, I really don't get the, the concept of it, but it just doesn't look good on any of the iPhones. You should really go in and look at your products and ask yourself, would you use this? Would you put this on your phone? Everyone is thinking it, I just it said bang. That's what most people would read. Not I just said it, I just it said bang. Makes no sense. OM. Dad, I'm coming in 20. That's what it says here. Go over your designs. Make sure that they make sense. Make sure that they look good on the products before you take them out, before you approve them, before you add them to your store. Because this, there are so many things here that could look good. This is cute. You have cats here and flowers. And I do believe that this is a seamless pattern. I'm just going to check it on the other items. This looks adorable. And your biggest mistake with this would be not to make a full collection from this. You could have had this with the white cat and a black background, uh, color the daisies a little bit, have it with a pink background, with a green background, color the cat in yellow. You could have done so much with this design to make it look good on all of these products instead of this. These don't look good. And you see, you've done it. You have the yellow cats and flowers here. But I would have made a lot more out of these styles instead of whatever these are. You have several items here that are adorable, but the rest of them are kind of disturbing and will get people really off the mood of wanting to shop from you. Moving on to CCC 2021 and best photos inspired gifts. Um, grammatically incorrect sentence. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what size you are using to create this cover photo, but it doesn't look good. It's very glowing. It's very yellow. Um, it doesn't really look good with the other products. There is no symmetry here, a different product selection, maybe, as well as a full frame around here would have looked better. And again, another store that I'm pretty sure is having Redbubble choose the types of products that are featured for each design, which is really, really, really bad. And these are all bad. Never, never upload a t-shirt with a background. And I mean, please, I get that it's hard. I get that we cannot always have something perfect, but would you wear this? Would you wear a shirt, a black shirt with a white square that has two ghosts just here for the booze? There is no design. There is no design element here. And it doesn't even look good on a white shirt. It's going to look really bad. And you made it in so many variations and in so many colors. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't look good. Colorful paper clips. I am not sure who would want to wear this. And if you put this, if you made this for a pattern, awesome. Don't activate this on all the t-shirts. You don't have to activate it on the products that it doesn't look good at because these are the products that are being shown. And if this might have made a sale on a different product, it's not going to make a sale on this one. I mean, this is on a hat. I would never buy this, ever. 
I would also not buy a sticker. I would also not buy it on a t-shirt, especially not like this, but I might have bought it on a pillow or on something else. Obviously, you should work a bit more in the pattern. The pattern doesn't really look good. These should be a bit more spaced out and a bit smaller to create a full seamless pattern that will look better. You have another problem here. You put this on the sticker. You have ghosts just here for the in white, booze in white, and then a line at the bottom. For some reason, you have a line here. Uh, this. Would you pay $29 plus shipping on this hat? If your answer is no, delete this from a hat. Don't approve it on products that it doesn't look good on. It's just destroying your store. And you know what? You made this declaration at the beginning. Best photos inspired gifts. This is not a photo. This is not a photo. This is not a photo. Most of your designs right now are not photos. And I get that you want to change your style. This is actually kind of cute. Summer vacation pattern on a mouse pad. Not sure I would have featured it on a mouse pad. I might have chosen to feature it on other things. This is a very, very terrible sticker. Just a mishmash of all of these together. But it does look good on the tapestry. And it looks good on a spiral notebook. And it is a beautiful pattern that could have been placed on so many items and look really good. And if that's what you want, if that's what you're into right now, making patterns, no problem. Deactivate them on the products that they don't look good. Try to align them to as many products as you can and change the cover. But decide what you want to do. I know it's hard. I've been revising my own Redbubble shop so many times, especially now that it's been spammed by my YouTube channel because I keep uploading different things. But there are so many things you could have done here. The 80s call. They want their music back. Awesome design. Too bad it's on a white background and with uh, uh, and the graphic is not close by. I was thinking about maybe making a video tutorial where I take designs and try to improve them. Please let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. And let's move on to our last story for today. Sapphire Creatives, which I kind of like the design of the cover, even though it's not all that well designed. I reckon that this is from Society6. This is the wooden wall art from Society6, which by the way, is a full square. So you probably like squished it down a bit so it's not really realistic, but I do like the design that you put on. And I'm trying to look inside. A lot of your designs, again, have nothing to do with this because I feel like a lot of people start with having their own style and their own art and something really meaningful to do. And then they get into, you know, all of these trending keywords on Redbubble, thinking that that's what's gonna make it better. And I think that you somehow kind of lost your style. And I do remember seeing so much with this store. And this is the reason why I chose you. Because if I go to your Instagram page, and by the way, you can also have your link here for the website. I pretty much recognize the Society6 products somewhere around here. And I kind of really like what you're doing here, even though it's not really consistent. But what I like the most is that you went ahead and created your own website. And I'm kind of curious how you made this website and you built it using WordPress with the Cadence team. Oh, this is so cool. So cool. Proud of you. And oh, actually, I should have, I should have recognized it just by the way that it looks here. This looks pretty cool. I really like what you've done with it. I, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, go into specifics because for someone who is not a website designer, this is really, really good. And I like the fact that whenever you go into a category, you will see these different products. And the fact is that it sends you to buy them in a new window from your actual store on Redbubble or on Society6. Just for that, you're getting so many good points from me. This is really, really, really cool. And I'm trying to see what you have in the about me. Oh, beautiful photo. Gorgeous work. I love what you do. The only thing that bothers me is the fact that it looks as though you really change your style to fit Redbubble or to do this. I think that your store could have been an amazing niche store for these beautiful autumn designs, leaf designs, these like geometric patterns. And it could have really been just your style without all of this. Because if I'm coming from here, if I'm coming from checking out these amazing creations and then I'm going to Redbubble and seeing something different, I might get lost and not even remember to come back to you. 
So I think that I would probably delete them and focus better on my own art if I were you. But again, obviously, it's your choice. And as I said, cheers for the effort, really. That, that was a really good Cadence website build-up. I'm impressed. And with you being our final and last, let's get back to me and chat a bit more about shop reviews in general and what I'm doing with my Redbubble store at the moment and how I'm planning to structure my print-on-demand marketplaces. And maybe it's something that you guys could learn from as well. And, you know, just some final tips for you guys. Let's get back to me and chat a bit more. And we're back to me. And if you like these like sort of shop review videos, if you like this video, found it useful, please hit that like button down below because every time you do, YouTube thinks, hey, this is a cool video. I'm going to show it to more people. And subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. I have been going through quite a journey with my own Redbubble store because I started it in, in various ways. I'm not going to go into that. We've had like, I think like two videos on how I started my Redbubble shop, how I do my own marketing, like the story of how I started with marketing it, as well as all the products that I have sold along the past, what, five years? Uh, hint, not many t-shirts, not t-shirts almost at all. But what I do think is that my journey on, on Redbubble took like a very big turn, especially because I've been using it to upload stuff from YouTube. So I spent the past two days deleting things from my Redbubble account. And I know that a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers go like, no, you should have a lot of designs. You should have like 3000 designs. And the fact is, if your designs don't sell, remove them. If people don't like your designs, remove them. And especially if you are niching down and finding your own voice and finding your own art, having art that will sort of spam that out is not going to help you. And I was looking into what I sell most that is now activated. So I sell a lot of Mahjong designs. So those one are remaining and I'm going to work on a little bit more Mahjong designs in the next few days. I have also been selling a lot of thank you cards and thank you stickers. And I am thinking about expanding that and adding a little bit more thank you notes into my Redbubble designs. I've also been selling a lot of my penguins, some of my owls, some of my sloths. So I do want to keep them, especially I want to keep the pun collection from the pun videos and maybe make more puns. I also uploaded a few jigsaw puzzle designs and I'm thinking about keeping them on mostly because I have ordered some of these products and it sort of relates to my own project that I'm working on with jigsaw puzzles this website to play online jigsaw puzzles for free and then have like affiliate links and merch. But I'm quite sure that I would want to separate the merch of that specific venture from Redbubble because I don't want all the competition of the marketplace. I just want it to be mine. And after much deliberation, mostly with myself, I think that I'm going to go with Teespring for that. You have the option with Teespring to sell up your own art, to make your own store with your own domain, selling your merch, and sort of get the best of both worlds. And by that, I mean, if we're looking at print and demand on marketplaces like Redbubble and Society6, when people come up to your shop to buy something from you, if they buy something, they pay the platform and you get commission, which is super easy, especially if you have a limited amount on your credit card, especially me, which I cannot go to my bank and have them expand my credit card because I'm not in my own country and haven't been in a very long time. With print on demand, the traditional one, when you're working with suppliers, you're gonna get your credit card charged while getting more money from the customer. And while that is something that I am interested in, I don't think I wanna do it with the Jigsaw Puzzle project because I wanna test out that project. I wanna see how it goes. I don't wanna make that full commitment. So Teespring gives you the best of both worlds. You have your own privacy, your own domain, your own kingdom without any of your competitors, but you also just get the commission and don't have to deal with any of the credit card charges that come with it. And I don't know if you guys want me to make a video about Teespring. I am going to take videos of the process of me building my Teespring shop and getting my own domain. And if you guys are interested in how to build your own Teespring shop with your own domain, please let me know in the comment section down below. And I would love to make a video about that in October. But we are still in September. We're at the early beginning of September and there are two more videos coming up this week that I think you're gonna love because a lot of you have been requesting them. On the 8th of the month, which is two days from now, we're all about text options with Canva. I'm gonna show you all of the options that you have with text and we're gonna talk about how this relates to print on demand as well for printables, whatever it is that you're doing. And on the 10th of the month, 
we're having a Clip Studio Paint tutorial, which is the software that I'm currently using, sort of like my own Photoshop. I got it free with my Wacom tablet, but you can search it online. If you don't have a Wacom, it's not free, but I think it is worth the money since this, I don't know, this software just has so many options. And for those of you who have been following this channel's community tab, as well as our Facebook group, you've noticed that yesterday I made a purchase from Printful for three different items. I purchased a t-shirt, a magic mug, and a print, like a poster. And the reason why I made this order, plus another order from Printify, is actually, well, two reasons. One, I want to make more print and demand supplier videos here comparing suppliers and comparing the quality, but also comparing the system and how it integrates and what are your options. So, you know, comparing the quality of t-shirts from Printful or Printify to Redmobile, for example. And I want to be able to compare wall art types because a lot of people have been saying they don't like Fine Art America, even though they are the considered the best for prints and wall art. So I do want to have that choice. And the second reason I ordered is, well, it's kind of fun. I do have to say, it's kind of fun and it's kind of addictive. And when I went into Printful to make the first order for a t-shirt, I noticed that as a person, as a seller on Printful, you have the option to order three test samples a month. So I made a sample order and you get a little bit of a discount and you also don't pay for shipping, which is really, really cool. So I made a sample order from Printful for a t-shirt and I was thinking, you know what, t-shirt, let's connect it to my jigsaw puzzle ideas. Let's connect it to that. So I made a design with a jigsaw puzzle piece. And I also was looking into mugs, but the magic mug, it's something that I've been meaning to try forever and I kind of wanted, you know, something to brand myself. So I put a logo on it for Royal Arts, which will be the logo for my new Etsy store that I will open as soon as I get my iPad and start doing Procreate. I've been watching so many Procreate videos. It's insane. I can't wait. Can't, can't wait. And the last product that I ordered from Printful is a wall art print, like a poster made from one of my sketches done with Taisui Sketches, which is also a software that I'll be talking about when I get my iPad because it works better on iPad than it is on the computer. What I also found out about Printful at the end is actually kind of cool. Do you know this thing with Etsy where if you have an Etsy store, then Etsy sort of gives you a link to give someone else to open an Etsy store and get 40 free listings. So every time you do that, that person gets 40 free listings and you get that as well. And I have that on my YouTube link down below. So if you want to open an Etsy store, you can go ahead, open an Etsy store, get 40 free listings, and I get 40 free listings as well. The thing is, Printful also has that. So there is a link down below in the description for you guys to get $5 off of your first product on Printful. So you can make an order of a test product that you want to order in and get $5 off if you've never made any order with Printful. And if you do that, I'm going to get the same $5 myself to order more products and test them out for you. So I thought it's kind of, I think it's kind of cool that, you know, it's not just an affiliate program where if you make money, then I get commission. It's sort of like this build up for both of us to be able to make the most out of testing products. And in a way, every dollar that you purchase to test out your product will be transformed into a dollar that I'm going to use to test out products and show them to you guys. And if you have any more products on Printful that you want me to test out, please let me know in the comment section down below because I will be making another order next month. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be utilizing the three samples every month with Printful. So keep on coming the names of the products that you want me to test out. And with that being said, with the shop review behind us and this small update on what I'm doing on print and demand and with my life and with this adorable corgi thing, this is just so cute and so warm. But that was it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.